What's up, guys? Bam! Right in your face. It's your boy, GRC. This is Crypto in the Morning. This is the best, most consistent, most comprehensive crypto show in the world, and it will continue to be moving forward. Okay? Let's get that situated. Guys, we have crazy guests on the show today. The most requested guests in the history of Crypto in the Morning. Gunther wants round two. And then you know what? He's like, let's get some spice in this on. I gave Hodprill a little DM. She said, let me grab my coffee and let's go. Okay. And then we have an extra special guest today, guys. We got a guest who's a sock master. Okay. And the socks that he has, I want some. Okay. But uh, guys, we're playing around today. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying not to be so uptight. You know, life's good. You know, it's just. Just go with the flow a little bit. It's, we're talking numbers, crypto all the time, but we're in a bear market, guys. People are wrecked. Terra Luna, V3, airdrop. Who knows what's going to happen next? It's ridiculous. But some, there are little beacons of hope within the crypto space. We all know about Hex. We all know about Pulse Chain coming up. We all claimed our free Pulse Dogecoin, okay? I got thousands of dollars with free Pulse Dogecoin. And as someone who's young and doesn't have that much money, that was nice. That felt nice. Like, it doesn't matter what anyone says, whether rug this, that, the other meme coin. I'm like, someone gave me 22 or 3,000 or whatever the heck it was at the time. And I was grateful. So I looked into it a little more. And, you know, I'm a researcher. I'm a crypto analyst. Let's talk about everything, right? We want to talk about security a little today, too, because I have a feeling Sam's on a little security tick. Guys, We'll be back in two minutes and two seconds. Let's listen to RH do a little boogie, boogie, boogie. Everyone, this is an incredible time to dollar cost average into your favorite cryptos. I'm not going to tell you what to buy, okay? That's ridiculous. I'm a gym rat. But I am going to tell you that all the stuff that you hear from the legitimate, legitimate YouTube guys with over 50,000 subs, over 60,000 subs, they're 100% paid out. They're 100 People are already in my DMs trying to give me money for everything that I do. Trust me, the industry is weird. It doesn't make sense. Most of them will sell out. You have to be very careful about who you listen to, guys. It's super important. And that's why I really stand for, you know, the RH ecosystem. Everything else is a little bonus. But for right now, I'm pretty much focused on the RH ecosystem moving forward, guys. I will be right back. Young folks, you tripping on them motherfucker. Rich your heart. Rich your heart. Bought my hex from the fucking start. Point one in every day we mark. Bought my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt. Got paid on big payday and I had a hit restart. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Buy my hex from the fucking start Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt Got paid on big payday and I had a hit restart Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart Checking my metamask moving Look at the hex he has mooning Looking at why they be choosing Peter is why they be losing Pro chains out and get me a check He's gas up and got me a mess Remember the times he died collect Hex I me mean, eating I'm dying in the best Getting this back like a year ago Getting this post ain't letting go Swerving the ring like a Lambo Getting this back like a year ago Getting this post ain't letting go Swerving the ring like a Lambo Buy my hex from the fucking start Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt Got paid on big payday and I had a hit restart Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart Buy my hex from the fucking start Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt Got paid on big payday and I had a hit restart Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart Let's get Sam, how are you doing this morning? I'm excited. I'm excited to meet some new people. I'm excited to talk about Paul's Doge. It's something that I you said everybody has claimed, which is not a true statement because I have not claimed 
any public storage. Uh, also, <laughs> maybe talk about the security and just pick people's brains because uh, everybody has something to share that is interesting that I can learn from. So I'm interested and I'm excited to talk to some new people today. We're going to bring them in and we're going to introduce them. And then, Sam, I'm pretty much going to give you the floor while I mess around a little bit and try to set up the show. Guys, let's bring them in. Whoa, look at this. We got a full house here tonight. Uh, good morning, everybody. How is everybody doing today? You Sam, know? if you don't scream. Doing well, doing well. This is uh that's, that's, that's the uh, OCD right there. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> before we get in, let me just say hi to the chat real quick because I'm probably gonna not be super interactive with the chat today because I'm gonna focus. Um, Hex t Tattoo, or how you doing? T Bird, good to see you. Tyrannosaurus Hex, Heinz Crypto, Flat Earth Underground. Gunther just brings the ratings with him. He just brings the ratings with his, on his back, and all a lot of people in this community respond a lot to what you have been doing on Twitter. And I think it's been pretty fun. And they, they, I've been doing it too. I turned into some meme guy now. I like, I like, I never have sent these little pictures with the rockets going up people's butts and the hot girls. Like <laughs> this is all funny. This stuff is brand new to me and it's absolutely electric. I'm like learning it from the Pulse Doge coin telegram group. <laughs> I, I've, never, I've never there. been in memes either before. I always, I used to like just talk down about them. But then, like, I, after missing, like, Doge, I was like, well, post, Pulse Doge is my redemption. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gunther, tell us a little bit about, for the people that don't know you, right, we did a full episode with you. You've been all over Twitter. You have the rags to riches story for crypto, like, the, like an awesome-ass story. And um, tell the people where you are, who you are, and a little bit about yourself. And I'm going to jump over to both of you guys after him. Yeah, um, so early, uh, I'm an early Hex investor. Um, uh, have very unique, interesting, like weird, like background with like, you can see some of my tweets, like you could see that I was like, in the military, I was a helicopter mechanic. Um, I've worked for Solar City before as an energy consultant, started my own precious metal business way back in the day, which failed <laughs> miserably. Um, I've, I've done a few, I've done a few different things. Um, let's see, but what's yeah, the most, what was the, what's the most interesting thing that you like to share about your history with, with new people? And unless why are you bring that up? Cause that's, if you find it probably interesting, I'm sure a lot of people will find it. Well, maybe you can go back to that yesterday. tweet you sent yesterday. I, I, I got a bunch of attention. You sent a tweet yesterday and it was absolutely inspiring to say the least. I mean, I can't remember the exact what you said, because I think we had talked in person a little bit about it. But mention mention that where you came from. You said it was like one of your most proud. I think the proudest thing or something you said. Yeah, like for me, like the most important accomplishment was not becoming rich from Hex, although I'm extremely proud of that accomplishment. But it was my emergence from a uh, cult with very strong religious ideologies, where I was essentially brainwashed from as from an infant all the way until I was 27. So I think that's much more powerful because. Unless you grow up in that background, I, I think the average person doesn't really know how much, uh, I guess, strength and fortitude and self-awareness and uh, courage it takes to actually leave that type of environment. Because, I mean, talk about being ostracized and hated. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just very challenging. It's hard to dig deep and, like, come out of that type of situation. Like, most people are, like, locked in for life, basically. Oh, there's a lot of people that escape. And this is just totally from what I've noticed from talking around the blockchain. Lots of people from the Amish community didn't didn't necessarily get along with it, and this could be completely unrelated. I I could be completely ignorant about this, but a lot of people that didn't jive with their Amish uh, family and maybe separated from that have found their way to Hex. It's funny. It's like something about that transformative experience where you actually cut the like most people go through this life where they generally move and gradually, but you kind of had to smash whatever ideology you had at the time, and it seems like. I definitely had to do that too. I was in jail when I was 19 and like in trouble and like I didn't know what was going on. I was like a kid, right? Like I was like, oh my God, am I going to be, everyone's telling me I'm going to be a drug addict forever. Everyone's telling me I'm in trouble forever. This is how my life's going to be forever. Everyone looked me in the face and said, Scott, this is who you are. And people know my name, so it doesn't matter my first name. They said, this is who you are. And I said, fuck you. I was like, this is not who I am. 
F you. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's got you know something that's interesting or, or super super unique to go through. Like I was homeschooled, but which is like you're like okay, we you're stereotypical like person who doesn't to talk to people who who, who doesn't like or nerdy all that kind of shit, right? Uh, and it sounds like the the version of your reality might have been even more extreme uh, than being being homeschooled in your whole life because the I don't know any of the background on that. I don't know if you want to mention that or something. But I also, before we get into that, let's uh, hear from you guys. Um, Hot Pro, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Because I, I, this is new for me. You guys have probably seen her on Twitter. You guys may have, have you a YouTube channel? Uh, oh. No, I, do, I don't. I just show up on other people's uh, streams. It's a misconception. Do I don't. Yeah. She's the smartest, cutest girl that we got that streams in crypto. We, 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 hey, we're bringing on more girls. You told us. You said the tweet the yes. other day. You want more girls in crypto. GRC wants more girls in crypto. Please. Period. Well, woman, please. And I don't care. I don't, I'm not saying I want like blonde bimbo girl. I just want people to. This is a this is a community, right? And I think it's important to not like people like you are opening. Where where do you see yourself in this group? Because you're. I think you are in the development world of some sort. Um, I was a game dev for, well, on the art side um, for years. And then the story goes, I uh, I mined crypto and kind of stopped <laughs> and did uh, went back to school and learned some of the stuff I wanted to learn. And um, it was good, but it was Bitcoin mining originally. And um, but before that, I was uh, I did. Game animation mostly, but game dev, game art stuff. Now, is that field, I, I don't know much about the art field. Is that generally, since it's digital, men, or is it women and men equal? It's always more men, like in any dev environment, whether it's art. The art department usually has more women, though, um, if I were to take a, a cross-section of it. Um, that What's your experience as being a woman in this? I mean, you're a woman. You're on Twitter with all the guys. Let's be honest. All the dudes on Twitter saying whatever they want all the time, me included, absolutely ignorant on Twitter. And um, it's just like my playground. Like, I've never had an ignorant place. But you're on there. You're pretty graceful on there. You, you know, people probably, <laughs> people treat you really well on there, too. How did you kind of break through that, right? And I, I'm being honest here. I just want to be super honest. You kind of broke through that. Like, I'm very nice to you. All the guys are very nice to you. You're very nice to everyone else. And you bring value to the table. It's like, is that something that you kind of just kept showing up? And you were like, eh, guys will be guys. People say weird shit. And then you just kept moving through it. I don't really notice much because um, I'm a little dingy in that respect, I guess, to where uh, I'm just not that easily offended. I don't know. I don't. Well, that's good. Like people have to remind me to be offended about a statement when I'm just, I mean, I'm out of shit posting, right? Like literally I'm just going marketing kind of what I'm doing on Twitter is going to <laughs> famous, you know, or pickup artist sites, which is where I get a lot of the fun stuff and just, I kind of shill hex a little bit. Right. But I, I try to, you know, I try to joke around with it. So they'll look and they'll call me an idiot. And I'm like, Oh, you are an idiot. Or, you know, just stuff that's funny. Cause I mean, Twitter is really made for just messing with people and being an idiot. You can only have a, just a certain am amount of words on there. So it's like either a sick burn or just some quick, sh you know, shilling of a, as a specific token. It's great for crypto to get people into it. You know, famous people are on there or whatever. So I don't know. It's all right. That's that's good, funny because I uh, I do I get a lot of messages from different people and there's there's one of two things that I found. I'm sure everybody gets messages, right? But there's <clears throat> on average there's two things that people message you about. They're like they want like, hey, come through. I had this question about this. Or hey, DP, I had this question about this thing, and I and I saw you talk about it. Do you can you point me in like the right direction, or is this accurate, or where do I find this resource? Right? They're they're seeking information. And then there's the other group of people who are trying to sell you on something where in, in your case, right, they're trying to sell you on a date or to talk to them type of thing. For me, they're trying to sell me on fucking something related to business. And I try to turn around, I've been doing this for like six months now, and I try to just sell them something. Like, and then they immediately shut up or they call you, they start calling you, they start calling you in. And I was like, hey man, I'm not interested, but if you actually want to be more successful, here, let me help you out, blah, 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 or something along those lines. Telegram is way better for actual information getting. And I split my time between Telegram and Twitter. So if you're really looking for info and to ask people questions, 
do it where they don't have a word limit. Do it where it's immediate and there are more people in the um, chat. So go to the telegrams if you have real in-depth questions. Telegrams, before we move on, telegrams are absolutely fantastic, okay? I, I'm new to the telegram world. I'm new to all this world, so I'm kind of like getting involved, mm -hmm. learning, everyone's seeing me. I'm kind of like popping around, just having a good time. And um, it's I'm in... I'm in the chat for Legion VC News. I like that chat and I'm not not shilling anything. These are the chats that I just like to communicate in for people that um, maybe like these things. Legion VC News, Paul Stogecoin, uh, the Gym Rat chat. I have a chat for the show. There, and I'll answer any questions you have about like the Keydron or anything like that, short term stuff. Like there's these places you can go. You don't have to ask your questions on Twitter where it benefits me that you're in my group, but it's also I'll give you information in my spare time. So it's it's a nice it's a nice kind of like value prop for the people that have like channel stuff and uh, businesses and stuff. You know, the one thing I add about tele Telegram is uh, and introduce yourself. I'm sorry, we we were. I, I'm sorry, I was going to get to you next. I want I want you to introduce yourself, uh, who you are, and what what you're about. And we invited you on the show. What's your name? You don't have to give your actual name, obviously. Oh uh, no no no, my fault. I didn't I didn't mean to interrupt. No, Talk no, about, no, uh, no. Uh, intro mm -hmm. but no i just want to add with telegram i feel like uh you definitely up your risk for exposure or wait your exposure to risk by like tenfold um just be careful with telegram it's so much easier to get scammed um, can you can you talk about that a little bit to give it a little bit more context because so so for me right like i i don't use telegram very much in all honesty like i have it uh but it's something that i got maybe two three months ago and i have it on my phone but I mean, there might be several days where I don't even open the app kind of thing. So can you can you talk about that risk exposure? This is a 100% selfish question, but I'm sure that uh, the, some of the 100 plus people watching will also find value in this. Oh yeah, no, 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 100%. I feel like most of the scams happen on Telegram. And I mean, to take your example, or to take you for example, it's like, okay, Mr. Sam Stolt, he uh, obviously is a public figure. He's doing things publicly on Twitter, on Instagram, but... Um, there's a whole entire niche and social that he's not into. And so what if someone with ill intentions said, okay, I'm gonna to pretend to be Sam Stolt on Telegram and there you go. So what I'm trying to get at is like, you have a lot of impersonation, you have a lot of people that it's it's easy to go ahead and you know fake being somebody else and it's hard to verify. Um, it's just, there's just a lot of more gray area that and they can get that follower count right to about with bots right to about whatever the account is near mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. do it on my instagram all the time i have like uh 2600 followers on instagram or something and the bots that have me have like eight thousand. Like, he's talking, i think i think dp is talking specifically about telegram because with with twitter or instagram or facebook or youtube i can go click on the profile look at the description and see if there's any Good that anything there to verify that that is the person but I sam mean, it pops up automatically on your feed so if you're in the pulse doge coin chat sam for telegram if you are in it sam stole just joined brand new to telegram let's say you just joined you said i like pulse doge coin let me go there there will be without you knowing because the chat won't be immediately covering this because they'll just be talking about whatever and it'll another one will pop up and if you're not if you're not savvy enough at looking it'll just say pulse doge coin airdrop that's what it'll say and it'll say extension airdrop and then there'll be like a thousand people in the group and the people that are new and don't have this back and forth that we're having it's the back and forth sam you have this back and forth all day you're learning these little insights but for the new guy he jumps right on there clicks post doge airdrop are you kidding me dumps all his post post doge right to that address or whatever that would be an example and then that's it and then they go to the post doge channel so, when's the airdrop and everyone's like dude so, so anybody, um, right? Because I, I, that happened to me when I was got into crypto 60 days, 90 days ago, right? And, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to claim uh, a hedron, right? And I'm getting like a 10x thing or whatever. So I, I was like, I don't know what I'm having doing. So I get into the Telegram group because I couldn't get the to connect to the site on the computer. And I was like, I had no idea what the app I was doing. So I get in there. And I get up to DP's point, get into the Telegram group related to Hedron. It's like these people are probably going to be the ones who are most passionate about it and can help answer my question. And I go in there and I was like, hey guys, this is my fucking issue. I've tried this, this, and this. 
what's up? How do I solve this problem? And I immediately get three or four messages from other people. Alex, right? The official, whatever his account says, right? Copies of them. It says Alex. It's like, hey man, uh, you need help with this. If you need to actually like claim your bonus um, um, hedron, just go click on this link here. Uh, you know what I mean? And going through this way. So uh, DP or Gunther or Hot Girl, what are some steps that people, like how do you kind of, Pay attention to that, so you're not like, because right, somebody's gonna get somebody's gonna get fucking destroyed. I'll tell you destroyed. what I do. Please. For for my name and Gunther's done this as well because uh, Gunther's been impersonated um, before. I put will never DM you first in my name, and then I don't DM people first because the problem is is when people impersonate you. If your if your if your name is if my name is Hodprill will not DM you first and I'm DMing somebody they're going to see that and wonder if it's a scam and it will be because I don't DM them first, right? Yeah. So that's one sort of way to get around it. Another one is um, just ask people in the chat if it's them messaging you. There's no real way to know if if I mean. You can expose people too. Take a screenshot and post it in the chat, and just be like, "Hey, do you guys yeah, do you guys interact true. with this person?" Right? If, if uh, mm -hmm. I get a message from Gunther and he's trying to be like, "Hey, man, you should send this address here, and I'll send you two back," and I'm Any like, address "Take a screenshot." Should just get get off. I mean, a lot of the uh, a lot of the mods will keep their eyes open for any stupidness like that. Sometimes there will even be uh, the chat will be set up to where if there is any. Um, wallet address posted it's just nixed right off the bat in the main chat and just be careful only um or you you know what you can do you can ask somebody to dm you in the chat that that is okay too but usually unsolicited chats be be careful because don't click the links don't click the links on the same computer that you're doing your crypto on it's good advice yeah, that's a great point if you're new, if you're new on Telegram, just keep your your uh, chats public, and you know, just try to be yeah. wary of if you're talking a, a botted channel. I mean, with crypt, it's like it's the wild west, right? With uh, with risk, there comes you know, like a high level of uh, of opportunity. So it's just, it's just that warning is it's. I mean, to to speak for myself, man, like the reason I'm operating off a phone and I'm doing things kind of like bootleg is because. My computer is a two thousand dollar crypto wallet. I'm so scared to touch that thing for anything else. Like, you know what I mean? And it's Good. like I've been in the space, and it's like just a hundred percent with you. I haven't even I haven't even claimed Hedron just because, dude. Like, you know, like I, I'm. No, I'm that's real. That's reality, though. It, it's important. People in the chat feel the same way. So continue. Right. No, yeah, no, please, because not um, um, what did you say? And I was gonna say this before you started to answer. When you are somebody DMs you or you're in, in, in like a private message with somebody and you're asking a question that in your mind, the story you're telling yourself is that this is a foolish, simple, basic, dumb, whatever story you decide to create in your mind about whatever it is that you're talking about, expose that. It will make you feel better about asking questions in the future. And there's other people that feel the same way. Listen to what DP just said. He didn't even go through and claim his free money with Hedron through this process, right? But and there might have been other reasons. Go ahead if you want to uh, talk about that a little bit more. Oh no, no, it's not to. I'm just paranoid. My my only thing. I'm just. I'm only. I'm only pointing out to my level of paranoia. And during the first days, you know, claim of every like even Pulse Doge. It's like I didn't. I didn't claim when it when it first came out because of again all this you know risk that's involved with crypto. So definitely, it's just do your due diligence. It's kind of the reason we've had to do four different audits with Pulse Doge. I mean, it's like after one, you think it's enough. And then after another one, you think it's enough. But then it's like, nah, pe people really need to feel secure. And that's OK. And that's fine. I mean, we're at a point where it's we have to do that in order to kind of increase adoption. People have seen the amount of wrecked and they've seen the amount of blood that's, you know, like, I mean, we can get into that in like, I mean, we, we've all had losses this this because in the bull market, I'm sure we've got rugged and we have crazy losses in the bear market. But it's just for the people that are that are, that are looking at crypto, they have to find the appeal. And if we're over here with our battle wounds and we're just barely able to, you know, survive the day to day, it's, there's no there's no appeal to that, you know. Go, hey, that's a go, great 
It's a great point, though. I, I really enjoy that the you, what you guys are saying because it's just more of the reality of the situation. Like maybe some of us have moved past that, but people DM me all the time. They're like, "I'm scared to plug my Trezor into my computer." You know what I mean? Like, th like they don't. It's just scary. It's new, but this is early adoption, so that's that's the price you pay. Gun Gunther, um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this because I, I feel with a little bit of context I know about you that there might be a, a framework that you use or a thought process to go through and say or add for help because of your development background where when something comes out like Pulse Doge or uh, Hedron or, you know, this 69 other type of projects that come out, how do you go about understanding for yourself to know if it's like a good, if you're like, is this a, is this just ripping people off? Is this is this like the development team's good? Like where, how do you sit in, in your path to move forward to be like, click it okay, versus like, it's brand new, skeptical, you, yeah, could be a scam, could just be ripping people off, they haven't found out about it yet, could be implanting this or whatever the case is. How do you get through that process for yourself? Is it talking to people, is it researching? I'm curious. Because for myself, but I'm sure it'll be helpful for people as well. Yeah, there's a couple. There are a couple. We can unpack that a little bit. So, for example, if you're going to claim Hedron or claim Pulse Doge, um, it's pretty safe. Like when you can, when you connect to those DApps, you're give. It, it tells you exactly what you're giving permission for. You're not giving permission for infinite spend limits, right? You're giving permission to view addresses and suggest transactions to approve, and that's very typical for anything that you're like. That's very a typical, like safe way of like claiming like free airdrops, right? You you would want to be careful if it was something that would give you like uh, where you're giving permission for like infinite spend limits. Even with OpenSea, I noticed I sold some, um, I wrapped some um, 5555 HSIs and uh, I to tokenized them and sold them on um, OpenSea because you tokenize them into NFTs and list them on OpenSea. And one thing I didn't like is that I had to give them permission to spend my USDC because when I sell those HSIs, uh, I'm receiving USDC um, from the buyer and OpenSea keeps a 2.5% commission fee in, in USDC. I, I mean, I did, I did it a, a, enough times where, I, where it was okay. I mean, I sold $750,000 worth of HSIs to a shark and hex. So it's, it's okay. But I'm just saying, you, you really need to know what you're doing. Now, as far as the... By the way, I just gave you the solution for over-the-counter selling hex. You don't have to be, um, you don't need to dump 87 million hex on the open market to, to crash the price like a retard. Sorry for using that language, but I'm just saying like, it's really dumb. Uh, you could actually do over-the-counter trades with other people that are interested in buying. Uh, in terms of the code, I like my me personally, I'm not a developer. I took one C++ class. I don't know code, right? I don't know how to write code, um, but I have devs that I trust that will go through the code and they will analyze it and present any type of um, security risk vulnerabilities that they see. And then you can start to go through it and 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 uh, research and see, OK, are these real issues that we should be worried about? One one issue that with Pulse Doge, for example, was we, no one could verify the, the Merkle uh, the Merkle tree uh, route like they couldn't work their way back. Uh, what is, what is, I'm, I'm sorry to go on a tangent. What is a, a Merkle tree? Ah, uh, dude, you're, <laughs> that's outside the scope of my knowledge. I, I won't I won't speak on that now. Um, right. But I just essentially there. Let's let's try to like dumb it down, and I'm going to be very careful because my knowledge is limited in this area. But let's just say that there's certain addresses for Pulse Doge that could claim, uh, and those claimable addresses had to have at least one open or active hex stake as of April 20th at some specific point in time. And if they did, then those, then that address is part of the set of claimable addresses, which would, which ties back into like this Merkle tree. But you, you have to be able to work your way back through it and discover all the addresses that are contained in that set. Because if you can't work back through the Merkle tree to verify, there could be some hidden addresses that could mint like maybe like unlimited amount of tokens that you don't know about. Like that's the security risk. Maybe Hotbro can speak more on this because uh, that's, that's a little bit outside the scope of my knowledge. Well, how, how, what Hotbro is, as to uh, Kinter Gunther's point, appreciate your, your insight on that. How do you, so some, you know, ABC Pulse fucking project comes out and they're like, 
hey, connect over here, we'll give you free shit. Like, how do you become comfortable enough to actually do that? Like, what is, is it just like talking to Gunther, there, talking to DB, listen to see if other people are talking about it? Is there something like you're going through reading through the whole site, like as well? Is it like, I want to hear your thoughts on how you approach something to, to understand if it's trustworthy to yourself. Okay. Um, the, I'll say a little bit about my personality type and how this plays into it because, um, like with the DP saying, you know, he's a little bit paranoid and that's okay. Um, my name's Hod Pro. Hodlers usually do research instead of trading. It's still time consuming, but that's kind of what happens. And um, they, they usually have a little higher of either wisdom trading or um, kind of a higher paranoia level. So the answer to that is all of the above. I will ask other people what their, um, I'll let them do it first. I'll see what their um, situation is if, you know, wait a few days, see what happens. I mean, and, and usually sometimes that means that the ex expense of making some massive gains, being one of the first people knowing something and, and being a part of it with the pump, but that's okay. Um, there are permissions. There's specific permissions that uh, you can look at when you connect your MetaMask. Um, you, you, they can only do what you will allow them to do. Um, but even with that, with free claims, and this is my personal way I do things, if there's a sacrifice versus a free claim, I'll sacrifice instead on a different wallet. Um, if I free claim on any hex or anything, I have multiple wallets. I'll use half of... I'll use half of my stakes to free claim and the other half not to. I just diversify every single thing just in case. And that's with wallets, that's with free, free claims and everything. Honestly, if the permissions don't allow for unlimited spending on your wallet, you're probably fine. I mean, Hex itself was an airdrop to uh, Bitcoin holders, was it not? So, I mean, every every original Hexican has clicked sure on their, on their airdrop, right? So there technically wouldn't be um, any OGs that would be so averse as to not do such a thing. Um, diversify, do a lot of research, ask people all of the above. Be careful, right? So, so when you, you guys have both mentioned the permissions, um, yeah. when uh, I've never read through them personally, right? You it know, asks oh. you when, when you... And and you go through and is it is it something like very simple it's like hey this is app, like you know the ones it's that google, google okay it's pretty or is simple. it like a toss like a terms of service or something where it's like 17 pages long and just shit that nobody's ever read about reading no it's uh what will you it's kind of like when you it's a similar way of uh <laughs> you know when something asks you can we use your location can we use your camera sort of thing like a i don't know on your phone. It's an yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a similar sort of question of what, you know, will you allow this to happen? You kind of see it when you, um, you'd connect your wallet to Matcha. They'll, they'll ask you permission to do certain things, whatnot. So it's pretty straightforward. So this is, uh, I think it's a fascinating uh, conversation. It's probably helpful to a lot of people. Before we got on here, I was having a we were talking about wallets. Yesterday I had a conversation for about an hour with Jesse from Liquid Bones. Yeah. And he was talking about how the you can use a treasure and they have the hidden wallet or the, it sometimes it uses different vernacular to describe a hidden wallet. And as he was describing this, I'm it's like solving mental problems for me because I don't care to necessarily have 14 different wallets. Uh, I, I just I remember, like that just doesn't seem super awesome to me. I understand if you're having you know multiple hex stakes, right? And having them all in one clearly a fucking risk, right? I completely get that. But the idea of having you know 14 different things, then you got to manage those things, and at what point do you draw the line? And then as time goes on, now you got 26, right? Four years later, and now you're at 37, like and, and the shit dies over time. And you're trying to manage all that stuff. It just doesn't seem like a super awesome like way of doing things from my point of view. So when he was describing this treasure and the hidden wallet on there as a way to reduce reducing risk associated with you losing or your C phrase getting destroyed, 
you can have multiple hidden wallets. And I don't, I don't have one, and I'm not claiming that I fully understand this is re repeating the information from him. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was valuable for me, and I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts on this. So you can have one seed phrase on the treasure, and you can have 13 different hidden phrases, which is, as we talked about earlier, uh, how to, you mentioned you can, this is basically a password, where you can set either, up either 13 or uh, 25, depending on your uh, seed phrase. And, and, and having that additional one that you create on there allows you to say, if I was running a business where I needed Gunther to take care of a certain portion of the business and have access to funds of a certain amount, I could have the one for the main bank account, basically, for myself, and then set up a, a separate one where we both have the passwords to the account. So Gunther could get in, keep, I could get in, but if he, he would also need access to the seed phrase. So in order to access my account, there's no way for him to do that unless he knows my password. And that I could store here, so it gets rid of some of the issues related to uh, writing down on a piece of paper, right? Where you're like, you probably wrote shit down on a piece of paper 10, 10 years ago. Right, and do you still have that piece of paper? Is it still even legible? Is it, is it has it dis disintegrated? Have bugs got on it? Has their humidity destroyed it? Has like all this kind of stuff, right? You moved probably, or like all those kinds. And I'd like to hear your thoughts in general, all of you, about what that is. Like, what is something that like I'm not seeing? And then also, last question on this: Can if treasure goes away, right? If they go away as a as an entity. Do you lose access to the hidden wallets? Because it, from my understanding with him, which I don't have, you that, that is a, a software feature of Treasure. So please, uh, whoever wants to touch on that first, whoever has experience in that, I would love to hear from you guys. And then after this, Sam, I know you're bugging out about security right now, but <laughs> I want to I want to introduce DP. Seriously, Sam, you gotta remember, like. We're, you're talking about all the nuanced security stuff that you've probably been thinking about for the last month, which is great. But now we're getting a little bit into the weeds as far as the 20. I know about the 20. Are you talking about the one extra word passphrase that's on the ledger, not the Trezor? The, the Trezor. It's not, is it on the Trezor? I think it's actually part of the seed phrase option. There are um, multiple pass. It's passphrase option, right? I think he, he, used different, he used different vernacular, so he used that okay. one time as well. But he also called it he also called it a hidden wallet. Yeah, you can call it the hidden wallet too. Multiple passphrases can be used uh, to create multiple wallets on the same seed. It's just the extra word. It can actually branch out into different wallets with that one seed phrase. I would use different wallets, to be honest. Uh, you don't have to go crazy, but maybe even if you had like three different wallets so that you could divide the risk in case one mm -hmm. wallet was compromised, you want different sets of seed words. And um, like, sure, initially when people get into crypto, you make it simple. You're like, yeah, okay, you could write down your seed words on maybe three different pieces of paper and store it in three separate locations that are secure. However, uh, what if there's a fire or what if somebody finds that piece of paper? You know, there's all kinds of risks, right? Um, so I think you should look into, you could reach out to Jexa. He's part of uh, the Hex community. And I actually, at one point had ordered some uh, plates from him, steel plates. They're two millimeters th thick. They're non-destructible. They're fireproof. And you don't even put all your words on one plate. Like for example, let's say you have, uh, let's say you have uh, 24 words, right? Or 12 words, it doesn't matter. You could divide them up in th three equal parts. Let's call part the first part A and the second part B and the third part C. And then what you do is on one plate, you can put A, B on another plate, you can put A, C, and then on another plate, you can put B, C. And you don't store the three plates together, you store them in three separate locations. So if you lose one plate or one person steals a plate, they don't have all your words, so they can't steal your money because they only, let's say it was a 24 word password, well, they only have uh, 16 words. But you, but because they took one plate, you still have two plates left, and you can recreate the twenty-four words because you set it up A B A C and B C. Sorry, I probably confused a lot of people with that. The basic concept is put your secure your fucking words uh, on plates so that you don't lose them in a fire, and break them up and divide the risk, and don't put all your money in one wallet. Like just divide divide the risk, especially if you got like hex stakes and you got liquid money, you got liquid pulse stoge, you got um 
whatever liquid hex or and and then when pulse chain launches you got liquid pulse pulse x all that divide the risk don't put everything all together so like uh that's an interesting way of doing it so a a a b or a c or something would be the overlapping sections of the if it's 24 words maybe use eight and eight or something like that to have yeah yeah exactly you over overlap them so you need two plates to recover the wallet right and then let me say something about seed words too super important um never take a screenshot never take a screenshot never take a fucking screenshot you don't know who's looking at that is somebody at verizon looking at that at t is somebody at google looking at that they're looking at probably google. yeah i mean yes. you literally <laughs> yes, just gave them a private key to your wallet with hundreds of millions of dollars and it's in the cloud with all those cloud guys you know chilling <laughs> i'll expand on that very quickly yeah. Um, in the bit 39, it's actually new, a mnemonic, right? So all of the words that you would use um, in any sort of seed are part of a numbered mnemonic phrase. Then there is a number correlated to each one of these words. So you can also store it as a number. So to further obfuscate what it is, if it's not obviously a seed phrase, you can use can you, the corresponding number as well. Can you expound on that, like using the alphabet as one, two, three, four, five, up to twenty-six, and then and then transcribing it in that way, like you would? Like, what was that thing they did? You know, in Germany, what was the? No, they have assigned numbers to each word, so you'd want right. to use the official. You'd want to use the official number to each one of the words. Like April is, I believe, eighty-two on the bit thirty-nine mnemonic. So zero zero eight two, if I remember correctly. You, you also don't want things just that you also don't want things so complicated that if you get into an accident and you get a, some type of brain injury or whatever, uh, like you can't even get access to your own money and none of your family understands it either. So you could have things that are so secure that no one gets access to your money, including you. But you could also have it too unsecure where, where anyone where there's too many like attack vectors and too many like vulnerabilities. So you need, sort of need like some type of balance. Right. Um, another another thing just to add to, to uh, this whole topic. Uh, in addition to what Hot Roll was saying, is um, uh, you're going to have people. So if you interact, you could interact with malicious sites. For example, MetaMask.io. There's malicious sites that are misspelled the URL, and if you're not careful, you yes. think you're creating an original MetaMask wallet. Uh, when you go to uh, when you get those new words and then you send money in, guess what? The, the the scammer who set up the site now has your words. And then goes into your wallet and takes all your money. It's like rest in peace for that wallet. Well, he might wait a little bit for you to get all your funds in there. You know. You yeah, keep, yeah. Sometimes they wait for you to milk it a little well, bit. But. Yeah, sure. But I mean, you. <laughs> I mean, there's, an art, if there's an art to stealing, but I have. I, I got an idea. I'm moving on from the security conversation <laughs> because security is great, guys, and we will do a full episode on security and everything specific as we move forward. And we've done them in the past, but I want to move on to DP. DP, who are you? I want to know. Okay, I want to know who you are. You're on, you've been honest up to us far. Give great information. I mean, you, you you basically said where you were at. Amazing, incredible. I love that you were being transparent about where you were at, and that's super important on this show. What else? Who are you, and what do you what do you do? Like, what do you? What's your interaction with the Hex community, with crypto, with Pulse Dogecoin? Oh, that's a great question. Um, man. All right. Well. I guess uh, I've been I've been part of the Hex community for a while. I've been trolling Gunther from from the first day I ever met him. So uh, and then I mean Jim Rat Sam Sam I've been trolling on Twitter a little bit. Hog Pro I've, I've pretty much respected his face. Uh, you know so yeah yeah I've, I've I've just been a part of the community. You know um, when the whole bull run started, I I've been a fan of art and NFTs. So you know. It's been kind of polarizing being a fan of uh, of Richard and and everything he has to say, and you know, and, and just kind of like trying to be a student at the same time, trying to have my own unique beliefs and and all of that. So when when he has like a, such a strong stance on NFTs, you know, it, it took me by surprise. So for the last year and a half, I've just been kind of diving into this whole entire degeneracy, like the degen side of crypto. I'm, I'm totally new. I'm totally new to this whole entire space, this financial, uh, you know, instrument as as far as how people are using it within a, a, a daily basis, how countries are using it to, you know, fund different different, you know, things that they want to accomplish. It's just been this whole entire learning experience for me. So 
I'm fairly new and when 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 I jumped in I really wanted to go ahead and and kind of have like investments that I could kind of predict and be like okay well you know I really like this community I trust this community I I understand what what this might be and so that's why I really fell in love with what Richard had to say and then like I said it was the whole entire degen nft side that just brought essentially the whole entire other crowd that I was involved in it was like okay well you know I come from this professional sector in the sense of like okay we're we're building a bunch of businesses IRL you know all these different things and then I have a whole bunch of degen friends that you know we go raves we go we go we go do a whole bunch of different things like you know like it's just we just live live life a little bit you know what I mean I can like, see you're you're hitting the gym as well just to just know oh. it Get, get some games over there, bro. Yeah, there we go. That dumb <laughs> thing. Don't over there too. Hey. I don't have any games. I was, you know, so I mean, just to tangent real quick. I really love what you guys are doing with this whole entire push. I mean, with the whole entire gym for this thing, it's amazing. Like that was the biggest thing for me too. Was when when Hex came in, I was like, you know what? I can really focus on you know my lifestyle. I can focus on certain things that blah blah gave me time. Blah blah. Anyway, so. Who am I? Let's come back. I'm a little, I'm a little spaced out right now. So let me, let me draw it back. Who am I? I'm, I'm the guy that kind of saw all this degen energy, and and had a whole bunch of degen friends, and I wanted to save a bunch of people in the sense of like, I, I really saw the value proposition of of the whole entire RH ecosystem, and it was really hard for me to go ahead and talk facts without feeling like I'm pouring out Kool-Aid for people. Like I'm like I'm like, you know, like if it's it's hard for me to just really like, hey, this is this is how it is because of this reason and this reason. It's just it was just really hard for me to kind of, you know, just approach the subject without finding common ground. So I played in the NFTs, I played in, you know, Bitcoins a lot. And just full transparency, I think my whole entire tuition I paid over the last year and a half was about hundred and eighty thousand dollars just because i got involved with things like poly i got in polygon man and you know the, the whole thing with polygon is like when people think you know like hot pearls obviously incredibly smart you know gunther's obviously incredibly smart but i'm a potato so people say you know <laughs> like you know like things you know hey i'm a gym rat yes dude you know it's like it's just I'm just a gym you know, <laughs> yeah, I, don't know, I don't know if you can tell what we spend all of our time doing, bro. <laughs> it's like, it's like you can, you can be speaking to me and I'm like, all right, well, you know, what's the purpose? What's the point type of thing? You know what I mean? So it's just with this whole, not your keys, not your coins on Polygon. It was like, all right, what, what is this mantra? What, what is this mantra people keep saying and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I was a part of Iron Finance and, you know, Mark Cuban was a part of that too. And we got all our money just out of, out of nowhere, you know. And I was a strong believer in uh, investing into uh, to pre-sales. And so I would put like, just because money was stupid back then, or at least, you know, if it, it was it was stupid in the bull run. So it's like, I would just put in like $40,000 into a pre-sale. What happened to the pre-sale? Oh, I guess I guess there's nothing. I, I guess I just went and, you know, funded another village. And so it was like, <laughs> it was like this constant, just like, just constant believing in something wanting to be a part of something and then i became a cat admin for like four months and over like over september september 2021 to 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 like december 2021 i was a cat admin and it was just you know i was i believed in it dude i i hired the island boys i did the whole entire you know, oh, you, did, did you, did you uh, do that cameo thing i saw the cameo on tiktok of the island boys oh hex is up blah, 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 blah. their hair is I, like all fucking crazy I, dude, I hired them because they were, you know, they were actually not bad. It was, it was a very <laughs> oh, wait. You're saying, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on one sec. Hold on. Great, this is awesome. Let me clarify something real quick. First of all, bullish ox in the chat here, producer bullish. He's bullish on Pulse D socks. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, we'll get to that in one second because I, I, th I feel like I'm bullish on Pulse D socks too, but. You just mentioned the Island Boys. I can pull that video up in a couple seconds here. The oh, Island Boys. They mentioned Hex. Oh, 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 can you, oh, can you grab that video of Island Boys? Are you telling me that you had something to do with that? I, no, no, I was, I was a cat admin, so I had, I had seen 
the the <laughs> kind of value <laughs> proposition. What? I was it was this it was this shit coin called Medicat, and they uh, were gonna be. Uh, I'm a big club kitty cat. I like they, club cats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why I said, dude, I have my, my cats are here destroying my house, you know, so it was like, I've only been rugged. So the $40,000 presale, guess what the coin was called? Cats, you know, like they, I've only been rugged Good by man. cats in this, in my <laughs> whole entire crypto career. It's oh, been man. crazy. First is YouTube, first is YouTube and cat videos wasting people's time. And then it's crypto with cat meme coins stealing people's money. <laughs> what? A that's I hilarious. love I love your honesty with everything so yes, far. I appreciate that. I do, but I do need to know. I'm a noob, bro. I only know like DeFi stuff. So it's weird because I'm like the first wave of guy that like only knows about Hex and Pulse and like Bitcoin, but nothing else. Like I never learned DGen life. I just That's was kind of nice. Oh, it's great. I was in paid <laughs> courses and they were, you know, I did a couple bad trades here and there, but basically I found my way to dollar cost crypto, Motley Investor. Guys like that, eventually, right after a couple eight hundred dollar whoopsie poo poos, and um, I found my way to these guys, and they said, "Guys, they said no, we're not getting paid for nothing. Like, just listen up for a second. You know, you're a young man. Listen up." And I listen up when when guys get to me like that, and they say, "Hey, we have experience. We've been here. We're doing this." They were talking the talk. They were DMing me. We were in Telegrams. I immediately knew like this is. But I forgot what the point was. But I want to know about the Pulse D socks. Well, the Pulse D sucks. I mean, keep it's, it simple. Gum it down. Really, really yeah, simple. So, because seriously, we don't know. I don't. I don't understand. And me and Sam are like, no. I don't. I don't, even, okay. I don't even claim my Pulse Doge. So like, All right. so tell me about them. As in, like, hey, bro, I know nothing about Pulse Doge. Him and Hot Prill are both metal underneath the skin. Got you. All right, okay. Okay. So value proposition. It's hard to dumb it down. Um, <laughs> Let me just cliff notes, cliff notes, cliff notes. Uh, like Gunther said, dog picture, price go up. So simple. Certain things, it's just, it's just people just invest in it. So Pulse Doge Socks is an expansion to an already W idea. Um, it's a fun idea. And there are some pump metals in Sockonomics. I think... At the core, it is a opportunity. We are trying to create more opportunity for creators. When you go look at the Sockonomics and where the money goes, it essentially is fed back into the ecosystem. So currently there is no staking. There is no inflationary type of tokenomic attached to Pulse Doge. So, I wanted to go ahead and kind of give that to the ecosystem. Now there's no promises, but like I said, I've, you know, I've been in hex for a while. I've sacrificed for pulse chain. I've wanted to give back to a lot of people, even, you know, like, like I said, my whole, my whole, the whole reason why I brought up all the pain is not so that people can be like, wow, feel bad. It's so that it's just like, you can understand where I'm coming from. Like I've, I've held off on doing a project for a while. And it's just after getting like you can look at my wallet. I just have JPEGs of stupid. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, it's so funny, it's funny because like that stuff scares me. Like if somebody sent me like an NFT, I'd be like scared. Like but like Hedron and stuff doesn't scare me at all because I like talk to those guys a lot. But like I've never had NFT other than the ones that people make of me that are really awesome. By the way, like all those things are really cool, and I like those ones of course. Um, but. In, so I'm, I'm going to switch it over to Gunther for a little Sockonomics game theory here. Yeah, let me just let me just uh, start with like the basics, right? So this, yeah. when we're talking about socks, at f first we're just talking about physical pair of socks, right? It's coolly, very cool, high quality design socks, right? So when this for, when we first, um, I guess in the early days, it still is the early days, but uh, originally you could send one Pulse Doge. To an, to an ETH address, which we call the SOC DAO. And in exchange, you would get one physical SOC and you would get one NFT, which hasn't been created yet, where he, DP is gonna is basically in the process of hiring female artists to create NFTs. And those, those are the NFTs that you will be able to get when you send a pulse stowage for a SOC, right? So in the early days, 
it, or when it first started, I should say, you would send one pulse doge, you get one sock, and then you're you'll be put on a list to get an NFT. Then it, but the price only moves up like the, like the uh, share price in hex. So then it was like, okay, you got to send two pulse doge for one sock, then four, then eight, then sixteen, then thirty two, then sixty four. It's currently at one twenty eight. You now have to, and it only goes up to five twelve. It's a limited amount, right? So once you get to five twelve, that's it. And DP can expound more on like the numbers, but uh, the point is, um, the price only goes up. You got to send one twenty eight pulse doge. You get one sock, which means if you want a pair of physical socks, you actually have to send two hundred fifty six pulse doge. That's an expensive pair, right? Uh, and then of course you get uh, NFT. Um, now let me just say this: why why would sock why would anyone care about socks? Uh, that, that's, yeah. that's literally, literally he's reading my mind. I'm like, yeah, yeah who cares? Why would I ever fucking do this? Well, have you ever pulled up the price chart of Unisox? It literally went up 397 million times in one month in value. Uh, hello? <laughs> like, what, we're in crypto. We only care about making money, right? But let's be honest. We don't care about utility. Sure, um, Brazology mentioned, like, uh, why, why are you guys wasting time, basically, with buying tokens with, like, dog logos? And to answer that, uh, because think about the millions of people that have bought Doge in Shiba and all in Shima and all, all the other dogs or whatever, or Chim or whatever it's called. Think about all these people. We want to bring them into the ecosystem, right? So we need to get on their level. We need to communicate with them in a language that they understand that's effective. And the way that we do that is we basically Pulse Doge is Trojan horse. We introduced them to this uh, dog coin, which is just a basic ERC-20 token um, that that's on Ethereum, and then you'll get the free copy on Pulse Chain. And we were able to draw them in this way. We want to bring money in from all of these meme coin uh, outside communities. We, we don't want to cannibalize the Hex community. We really don't want their money. We want outside money. We want Doge's money. Even if we got just Doge's money and not any other... Um, meme uh, token, it would be crazy how high the price of Pulse Doge could actually go. I mean, you're talking basically matching the price of Bitcoin. It's safe to say you don't care if the people that got a free claim just hold it and never sold it. Like you wouldn't care if they bought more because you feel like the adoption and what's potentially good. You know, as we all saw Pulse Doge 64,000% from the bottom. You know what I mean? And, um, so you're kind of saying like it, it, you don't care if people buy. So for everyone in the thing that just thinks Gunther wants every hexagon to buy as much, it's not true. It's stupid. Plus, it's literally playing into what legacy does, right? <clears throat> so come, legacy is my background in finance accounting, and in in that world, you have probably sixty to eighty percent of the people who purchase. Uh, mutual funds, uh, stocks, uh, ETFs, uh, bond funds, uh, anything at all in legacy don't have any fucking clue what they're doing or what they're purchasing. Most people have no idea what they're doing. And when you look at crypto, the meme coin is exactly that, right? It's a representation of this giant swath of people who put money into things that don't have they don't they're, they're not like they're not like diving in to really understand what is going on but they're they're, they're intelligent right or at least in some capacity or their facet of their life they're intelligent and this is taking advantage of that to help bring at least i don't i don't want to fully get the picture but to help take advantage of that to grab those people in and be like, hey, start paying attention to shit. There's better things out there than just putting your money in, into different things and pulling those people into uh, this ecosystem. Is that Real quick, before you answer that, Biceps in the chat, if I've been bothering Axis Live a lot in his uh, DMs to come on the show. So in order to pressure him, Biceps in the chat, if you want a Axis episode, Biceps in the chat, guys. All right. Let's go. Let's go. We definitely want access for sure. Biceps in the chat, guys. Yes. <laughs> Let's go on about legacy. I'm you got to do one at a time, hot bro. Me to the side. <laughs> hey, one. So, like most, think about if you if we break down crypto in a very simplistic way, at 
all the all the arguments that people talk about like oh we want a token with utility oh we want this token because it has like really complex tokenomics uh yeah i get that but honestly that goes way over people's head people don't give two fucks about solving the byzantine generals problem they don't care about mathematics they don't care about computer science they don't care about all this complicated shit. all that they care about is making money and people love simple things like dogs and cats and whatever remember crypto kitties and all that stuff so and look at doge doge is just the perfect example it, you have to inject by the way so much money into doge just to paint it sideways because doge inflates at ten thousand tokens per minute uh that means you need some crazy I, I forget the math but some crazy amount of money uh like a really large amount 450 million dollars a year or something just to paint it sideways not to even push the price up imagine if you took a tenth of that money and put it into something like Pulse Doge with low liquidity and you have benevolent whales who only care about uh, accumulating the tokens and hoarding them uh, so, they, so that they could behave like monetary policy for the asset or like the De Beers group or like the Hex OA. You just let a small amount trickle into uh, circulation over time. Um, so at the end of the day, my point is people don't care. It has dog, buy button. It has kitten, cat, buy button. Like they're, they don't, they just don't care. They want to make money. Everyone wants to make money. Let's stop lying to ourselves. Richard Hart taught all of this. Why are people now pretending that that's true? Uh, I've seen this a lot, even within the Hex community, but it has no utility. It has no utility. Uh, yeah, hello, no one cares about utility. No one, no one. Old people only want to make money. That's it. Uh, that's true. And, yeah. But you know what, <laughs> like, just to go on a tangent real quick to bring it back to uh, the socks and reading what Christology has to say and. It's like, like, and what, what Gunther has to say about not recycling money within our own ecosystem. And I mean, going back to a point, the reason why I ventured off and was like the prodigal son was because every time GUI does spike, like within the last few days, every time it goes above a 40, a 50, a 60, you can bet your bottom dollar a new mint is happening or a new, someone's buying a freaking JPEG. Every time that GUI goes up, it's not because some YFI fork or anything else. It's because of JPEGs. It literally is because of JPEGs. So that happens almost daily. And we're talking about an eight, like a very large percentage of the industry is involved in these JPEGs. And so the reason Pulse Dog Sock DAO is important is because we only work with PLSD within our ecosystem. The reason all these things are important is because it expands the ecosystem. It, makes PSD even more deflationary. It gives me more opportunity to give back to the community. Um, right now I'm platforming artists that wouldn't normally have a voice or wouldn't normally know about NFTs. So all the NFTs that are dropped are literally, are very unique. It's not some Fiverr artist that I found and it's like 20, but whatever, you know what I mean? This is all the alphas in the telegram and there's, there's, there's just a bunch of stuff that makes Pulse Doge very special because it's community driven. Like when you look at you look at things like Saitama or you look at Doge, like you, you, the, the the person who created Doge is still out there fudding his own bags. He literally came out with a brand new article that was like, guys, I really hope crypto doesn't work out. Like, I'm so surprised you guys are still in it. Like, he, he literally said that. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but it's just that's the creator of Doge. And he's fudding. He's fudding that. I mean, regardless of tokenomics, it, could, it just floods itself. But I'm just saying, like, it's the community that makes all these things. It's it's things like what I'm doing. It's people like Gunther. It's the whales that he's attracting. It's literally he's sounding the whale call and they, they're out there. You know, you never know when they're going to splash in. I know it's crazy. It, and so especially with these NFTs thing, it gives more value proposition. It gives more it gives more to talk about. It's like, yeah, picture of Doge, but also, hey, we're you know, we're onboarding artists and we're doing a whole bunch of different thing within with our own ecosystem. and get in where you fit in, right? It's, it's, that's, that's how, that's how I see it, especially it'll, it'll make more and more sense to a lot of people. It's just, I feel like we're at that, that real bell curve where it's like, you have the smart people and then you have the people that are like, you know, we're the potatoes. And then you got the, you know, the, the actual normal people where they're like, well, where's the value? Where's this? And then, you know, they gotta be convinced. And that's what I'm saying. It's just, I feel like we're there. We are there. I want I want to I want to bring this over to Hodpro for a second. What's your what are your interactions with any of these 
meme coins. What's your meme coin story, if you have one? I don't know anything about. You seem like you were in the art background, so that kind of translates into the meme coin space. Um, yeah, I think they do have their utility. Meme, meme coins have a utility. It's to pump and trade and to um, actually, weirdly enough, you know, I'm, I hold, I'm a hodler. Yeah, I'll, I'll make Pat, uh, you know, jabs at traders, you know, just in fun. But meme coins are a very good um, practice tool for trading as well, right? You go in there, you learn a lot about them. Um, trading and and charts and everything through meme coins and yeah of course you can make money it's the volatility um to use volatility to your benefit and to watch a chart see when it will go up watch the adoption um meme coins can be really great they can also be rugs right and obviously i think that um you know pulse doge is not a rug it has a real community behind it they're not out to just pump and dump people but in general meme coins you have to be careful and do a little bit of research make sure it's not that sort of coin uh, or token um that's pretty much it they're 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 tokens they're as valid as any other tokens if you want to have Did it you, you want to participate in any of those spaces in your own personal life no like <laughs> yeah, i have a I have that's too much cheese. of a question. I'm not trying to get into your shit either. No, that's fine. I, I have mac and cheese and everything. I've never gotten a doge. Mac I've and never cheese. gotten doge. What, what, is, what is mac, what and, is mac cheese? and cheese? Oh, it was airdropped to hexagons. It's a, is it still uh, claimable? Is it still claimable? I've never even heard of it. I think it was just during the sacrifice phase uh, that it was claimable. I don't think so. Uh, but, it's but not yeah, like I'm a I'm crypto an, it's a, I'm a crypto cool. analyst and I missed the whole um, mac and cheese. Helgo, Helgo is being made too, and that's actually kind of the the economics of that is to actually pump the uh, hex price. What do you know but, about Helgo? Um, I know that uh, if you have you read the have you read the paper of white? I I actually have. <laughs> you, ooh. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting enough because he, uh, Gunther brought it. Yeah, Gunther knows a lot about it too, actually. I just like bounced around about Helgo between yeah. all three of you Maybe guys. Maybe he does. Anything anyone knows about Helgo, I like the website. I like that it says buy hex in the corner. and But it's technically a meme coin, right? You know, and it totes itself as such and a pulse doge is, as well. And no no problem. Anything on the head, anything supporting pulse on the pulse ecosystem that isn't a scam i'm willing to support and i'm willing to look into pulse doge i don't have any at the moment but i could get some well the helgo is also supposed to help uh from my understanding with well this is gonna be good but uh there we go. Help, help with the dog co the dog coin correct but when we talk about that in a second this is what dp actually paid for and set up no 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 they, no no sam please sam. please give us the context is this about that was my understanding no, no, you gotta look up meta it's a meta cat i did a meta cat one with the island boys and i can send you that one it's on my phone oh, no, i know I, I i caught all that when you told me i just wanted okay, to pull okay. it up because it was funny <laughs> yeah yeah bullish are you there if you're there play it he might not be there anymore oh god it's on, it's on his screen but um Big shout out to Hex.com, man. I know you guys are trying to get to the top, and you guys going to do it. I understand it's your favorite crypto, and it's turning to my favorite crypto. Uh, so, yeah, number one, blockchain CD, the first one. Hey, I'm an island boy. I'm going to keep it. I'm an island boy. I'm going to see it like it's all one. Tell the boy, you better keep this gun. I'm going to keep it like it's seen the sun. I'm trying to make it down to the top. <laughs> Big shout out to Hexcom. Hey, stop playing. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's hey, stop playing. Hey, that, by the way, the peak for Hex was the Island Boys. It was the Dancing on Graves uh, eulogy video. Like, that was recorded actually at the peak of Hex. All this stuff. These were all, like, uh, signals for a crash. So, heads up. So <laughs> Good Good we, call the, we call those top signal meme yeah, memes top in signals. the game. Um, I want to go back. To, I want to go back to Helgo. That was just a nice little breakup. But I want to go back to Helgo because there's some serious stuff going on there. I, I read the white paper. I looked at the website. I didn't. You know, I'm not going to say I did a full deep dive, 
but well, I guess I kind of did, but tell me about it as far as the ethos more so like what's the ethos for it and uh i don't know who's involved in it but i want to know more about it well um it's it's a uh i think when you buy helgo you have to buy hex there's something about it like that i have yeah when when pulse chain launches you could yeah. go in with hex uh, I think over a period of 30 days and then get Helgo and you'll get more uh, Helgo when you do that. Yeah, so it's, with it, pumps, it will pump Hex in that regard, but it's still a meme coin. Um, Helgo is the bottom indicator. He's a person. And, um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's pretty well made. It's a, it's essentially a, a meme token on the surface, but it has very deep tokenomics built into it. Like, yeah, it does. Farm it very so. There's a, there's a lot to it. You could really just go to helgo.io and start reading up on it. Um, it's it's not going to be on Ethereum. It's only going to be on a Pulse chain. So you, my suggestion would be at least go to the site helgo.io, read all the information, and start thinking about it, and see if that's some a place that you'd want to put some of your money. And then maybe when it launches, you could take some of your hex and go into that. Or if you don't have hex, you could buy hex. And, and, and I think it's a good play. It's also a nice way. So if if Pulse Doge is the Trojan horse to bring in all the money from meme tokens that are outside of our ecosystem and outside of our communities. Which it is. It, which it is. Which we, this is what we want to create. This is what we want it to, to be. Uh, I mean, it's going to take some time. It's not going to happen overnight. But then what we could do is we could have people easily transition from Pulse Doge and add to their meme token position with Helgo. But then when they get to Helgo, it introduces them to Hex. And then when they get to Hex, we can start teaching them about staking ladders and all of that uh, and, uh, and delayed gratification and like you're earning interest and all that. Um, and then because obviously this is all on Pulse Chain, now they're introduced to Pulse and Pulse X. So that's why I keep bringing home, the, that's why I keep emphasizing it's, it's a Trojan horse. We're, we're showing you our cards. We're showing you our hand. But it's a Trojan horse that could be very profitable for people because think about it. It was airdropped to the best holders in all of crypto, hexagons, right, to, to like stakers. And even though some people murder the price and dump the price down, um, and even well-known public figures have been dumping the price down, people that would shock you to sh like shorting, not, not like using leverage, but just like selling hex down with millions of tokens so they could come back in with with a, a stronger position. I won't dox those people, but I will say there are some very prominent figures doing that. But anyway, um, with Pulse Node, you have, um, you have a, an ultra low liquidity environment. You have a super scarce supply that's hard capped once the 100 day claim phase ends. When the claim phase ends, the OA, the hex OA, the real origin address, 7CO3, and also the benevolent address can mint 10 tokens per address that was claimed. And that's the stack they get. Mm -hmm. However, with Pulse Doge, um, it has several uh, whales. And you can look at the top wallets in Pulse Doge, just different addresses. They've never sold any hex tokens. Sorry, never sold any Pulse Doge tokens. Um, these whales have a stronger position than the OA and the BA combined. This means that they can protect and defend the price for a very long time. Um, it, it appears as though these whales are working in harmony or in unison, but nobody really knows. It just appears that they have, a, uh, I'd say, a desire to make everyone in Pulse Doge very wealthy. And the way that you do that is you hoard the asset. You, button, you just buy. All you do is hit the buy button and hoard. Buy button and hoard. Um, where was I going with all this? Um, so I guess my, my point is this. You can use Pulse Doge to your advantage. You could make a lot of money in this asset. And then down the road, maybe two years down the road, scrape some profits into Hex. Scrapes, maybe you scrape 10% of your position into Hex. Or uh, we're, we're just it's an arbitrary number, right? Yeah. Or you scrape some profits into Pulse or Pulse Hex or other assets that you, that you like. So I, I think this whole argument of like, oh, Pulse Doge just wants to leech off the Hex community and just wants to take their money. I, 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 I think that's just a very weak argument that's very biased, prejudicial, 
and a manipulation of the facts and of the truth. Let's start being honest with ourselves about this stuff. Let's hey, if, if Hex got low enough, I might uh, think about swapping some of my free pollster low, you know, some of my free pollsters going for Hex. Why not? I'm a, I'm, I'm a young guy. I don't have full bags. Like, yeah. I'm not, let's be honest for one second. Okay. I, let's say I had no money left in fiat. <clears throat> and then I had the blessing of claiming my free Dogecoin, Pulse Dogecoin. And now let's say Hex got to a level where maybe I had never DCA'd in before. Like maybe like under a penny or something, whatever happens, right? Then I have some extra capital that I can actually swap some of it into Hex and maybe stake that 5555. Five, five, five. Yeah, why not? There's plenty of people that have done this. Plenty of users have taken their free money and swapped it for Hex and built stakes. We fully support that 100%. Yeah, and I could. Like, that's, that, this is what a free market looks like. We that could be that could be someone's life savings for the rest of their life. Like, let's yeah. say someone never got involved in the postage coin chat. I'm sure Gunther wouldn't mind if they dumped their ten grand or five grand or two grand or anyone that was in the postage community would not care because they'll buy that shit right up probably. Yeah. It's a win. You know what I mean? So, but that, that gives them an opportunity. That gives a random person that has nothing to do with Pulse Dogecoin or the chat or the meme, they just forget about it, whatever. Even if it blows up, who cares? They don't remember, they don't care. Some people don't care. Gives them the opportunity to have an actual hex stake of any length that's actually pretty substantial. It's substantial. We're, I'm, I'm talking, I think if you got one T-share, I'm not sure the calculation, but I think if you had one T-share, you got 100 Pulse Dogecoin, Sam. So I think that's right. So I don't know if you only had one, like what, I don't know like which league. It's all based on the leagues. You could go to PulseDoge.com and see all the leagues. So the smallest, the smallest position got, um, I think five tokens if they free claims. And then the largest position is 900. But even just assuming like, let's say you're like a dolphin, you got 900 tokens and the price is what, $4? That's $3,600. You could cash out, uh, hey, what's up, Maddie? You could cash out your uh, position and um go right into hex or anything else that you want to go into it's like you're it's your it's your private keys it's your coins it's your money it's your choices it's your responsibility you and do so what you, you know sam even the small holders of hex had a bit of a bump like in i don't, I don't know the ratio but like even small holders got like a thousand dollars worth roughly at the current price i'm pretty sure like people with one t-shirt got like a thousand dollars a thousand dollars. Think about that. You were just doing your thing, working, and 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 they came out and gave you a thousand dollars. Doesn't matter if you ever look at the Telegram. Doesn't matter if you ever engage with Twitter. Doesn't matter if you ever engage with Instagram. Doesn't matter, right? You could swap that for hex. That could literally change someone's life. Right this, now. I mean, this conversation, right, has been like, well, Sam, I should probably get in there and at least claim false coach because I haven't done that, right? Uh, uh, two things that. Uh, I wanted to hear one opinions on, on on the kind of roadmap going forward for this, but also uh, the the NFT is a so because like if somebody was like here's an NFT or it was like okay cool thanks like what's the point for me like and I understand that like other people have points of view on this and that it's valuable it's just not my, how I see things so is there anything that this NFT does that's going to be associated with the socks I'm curious. Uh, and then also, and then on the other side, I'm sorry. And then the other thing is, this is probably going to have to be an iterative a process over time, like as Gunther mentioned, to uh, scale adoption. So I want to hear your thoughts on that first. But the NFT thing first, please. Yeah, great question. Um, you know, the the biggest the biggest problem presented was always like, okay, I got an NFT, like what now? And it was always like, okay, well, you know, the art's great, but you know, as as the space evolved, people wanted more and more. So we're really we're really reaching into the digital item um, claim, and that's pretty much physical and digital world where you pretty much have a digital set of something, and then you can claim a physical set of something, right? Um, also, probably delivering passive rewards. I mean, the way the tokenomics set up, and with everything that Gunther said, you have to realize he's pretty much framing on Ethereum. The whole, the whole there's a whole entire exciting episode that comes when Pulse Chain launches, and we have such incredible financial you know momentum and power that you know, that prt token 
might might be might be coming over to the pulse doge system so to speak you know what i mean we, we could be using that thing pretty well or uh doing some some sort of like buybacks you know there's just there's just so much in the works is what i'm trying to say as soon as pulse chain launches and the whole the whole the whole idea of why it's attractive is because you can you can kind of trust the liquidity you can kind of trust the bigger players and and the people that, that what, what, what do you mean by that when you say you can trust the liquidity because at any moment any one person right coming in from the outside being skeptical i eat myself right so at, at any point anybody could pull liquidity or add liquidity so when you say you can trust liquidity what's like the understanding behind the context that gives you that to use those words for that just so when, when i say trust the liquidity what i'm implying is that i'm assuming that it's more stable and it's more predictable and i feel like for whales and people that you know where slippage is an issue when they're losing you know thousands of dollars on certain trades it's these these things might be very uh, attractive um you know i'm not i'm not working with those kinds of bags and i'm not uh you know like hyper focused but i'm i'm just trying to assume and put myself in certain positions and gunther so the other thing is is that like with mo most successful meme coins and meme communities is that they do have whales and those whales are usually docs they usually have like they're usually like the, the community speakers and that's kind of what ends up happening in, in you know in this meme coin space and pulse doge has a few whales that are uh, you know willing to go ahead and put themselves out there and and we have one god whale and so you know the our, the god whale can definitely can speak of that a little bit better as far as why that might be attractive and if that is that if that is even something to consider gunther am i am i speaking on my ass here or is that something that's actually uh no no i, I don't think so i mean honestly um to, to kind of uh, answer your question about trust can you trust any large players in any crypto right i mean you really you really can't i mean it's true you i guess over time you learn to trust certain wallets that maybe demonstrate good behavior but even even wallets that have a uh, consistent demonstration of good behavior, even if they make one mistake, you know, they, they could be like ostracized and judged forever. Like they're always gonna do that same, uh, they're always gonna have like that same psychology or that same behavior, which is not necessarily true. Let me give you an example, D01. Everyone hated D01. D01 still living rent free in the minds of everyone, right? For people that don't know, that's the address that he's just mentioning a, a certain address. Yeah, exactly. It's the last three of a certain address that of Ethereum address that just mega dumped multiple times. Um, and like, so really was that address maybe not known for dumping Gunther at the time? No, no. So my point is this is that D01 has been has been a well known dumper. Okay. Uh, that's just like murdered the price on a few occasions. However, D01 has evolved. D01 um, is like extracting value in a more intelligent way. So um so you can't just like you can't just go by one action with what like chain analysis is more complex people make all kinds of assumptions and jump to false conclusions uh silver the antidote would be a good example of someone jumping to false conclusions like basically piecemealing things together making assumptions that you cannot verify or validate and then running with that and then propagating that all over twitter it's not really like it's just not good for, it's not good forensic analysis so for example let me give you an example uh, some of the top wallets recently in Pulse Doge actually uh, sent money to certain addresses of users within the uh, ecosystem or within the uh, community for some of the work that they've done, but with creating memes or creating the NFTs or just their contributions to the community. And someone that looks at the wallet might be like, see, they own all those addresses because the addresses are connected. And then if those wallets ever start selling, they can be like, well, see, these top wallets are selling. Well, that's poor forensic analysis. You've made a set of assumptions and, and you've come to a certain a conclusion, but you cannot validate or verify that, that those assumptions are actually true. Correct. Because so, you can tell the story in the opposite direction. It's exactly. just a story you choose to believe in one way or the other. You could paint any narrative. Uh, you could be like, well, uh, uh, like people know, people know me for dumping Hedron. I like, see he cashed out and. And then he used that to go like buy a Tesla. And then he like went on some fancy trip to Italy. And now he's just like hanging out with a bunch of hot, beautiful women in Italy. Uh, or you could actually go through the transactions. That and sounds dope though. Where the <laughs> 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 that 
That sounds dope just for yes. Focus, focus, focus. Hey, go through, you, go ahead. <laughs> but you could actually go through the transactions and see, follow the money trail. Where did the money go? Start thinking like the FBI or the CIA or the IRS and actually do some real fucking research instead of coming up to like just like false conclusions. I just I guess I'm just sick. I guess I'm sick of these like these shitty analysts that pretend that pretend to be as if they work for the FBI or the CIA or the IRS. They have they have really have no fucking clue what they're talking about. So just be careful not to jump to conclusions. And I've done this before too. I've made the same mistake about D01 and about and maybe about others. Don't yeah. jump to conclusions, do research. But my, my point with all this is about trust, right? Getting back to your question. How can you trust them? It's hard. You have to establish and build trust over time. Richard Hart, people didn't trust him. Uh, people don't trust the OA that has over 3,000 addresses. But guess what? Over time, the, you could demonstrate that those addresses have never sold hex tokens, and it builds confidence and trust in the community. And I think that's really important. So I would suggest, or I would posit, possibly, that maybe Pulse Doge wills uh might actually be benevolent they might not just be um rug me daddy wallets uh but more like magic carpet ride wallets i'm just throwing that out there food for thought maybe they want maybe they want to make a bunch of people wealthy a bunch of people that are impoverished maybe they want to turn them into multi-millionaires we don't know we can't spec this we don't have a crystal ball we don't we can't predict what will happen in markets but we do know that centralized ownership works really well we know when you have a scarce asset and it's hoarded by whales and then they just keep buying and buying and then you, you get adoption from other meme coin communities, it could potentially do well. It could go to zero like any other investment, right? So don't don't bet the farm. Don't bet your house. Don't be stupid. Don't gamble with money you can't afford to, to, to invest. But maybe you buy some and hold it for five years or 10 years or, or, or even two years. Maybe you might do pretty well. Maybe. Here's something well, funny I'm thinking about too is a, uh, it's it's feasible because we're kind of creating an ecosystem right the pulse ecosystem and you know it's it consists of hexagons mostly now but it would be funny if some of these old whale address like oh no they're dumping the price of a hedron or dumping the price of hex and i'm so mad but then they're actually just buying up a different asset that you have so, <laughs> so they're pumping the oh, prices you know, up that, goes, that, that's a good point that happens all the same that, that definitely happens like, yeah. so like, oh, never so, mind. I'm not mad anymore. Thanks. Right. That's what we're. So again, <laughs> we're trying. Not to stable it's like, coin, <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> I, I hate to inter. I hate to interrupt. I have to run. Uh, I have uh, some obligations, but you guys have a great stream, and I'll come back and watch the rest and rejoin if I can. All right. Bye, Bye, I enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for your time, Gonther. I appreciate. I, I, will, I will. I will be claiming. Uh, I will be claiming my pulse coach. So. Perfect. Thank you for the conversation today. Yeah, dump it's it on our good. head so we can have it, all right? No. <laughs> there won't be any market selling from top wallets. Don't have I, mean, how, and so, I was talking about Sam's yeah. little bag, not not yours, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, what bags do I have? Who knows? Maybe Who I knows? Just, hey, Who what, knows? What bags do any of us have? I, I, I promise I'm going to say I'm broke on here until I'm 90. I don't care if I make a billion dollars or not. I, I you know, Smart. nobody nobody needs to know what they. Yeah. Everyone has their docs addresses, of course. Mm -hmm. and even even if you bought big bags, well, maybe you put the seed words in a glass bottle, went out to the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean and tossed it overboard. Or maybe, maybe you sent them to Jim Rat. Everyone send your seed maybe. phrases to Jim Rat. Maybe. You, know, you know, it's sad. We're gonna lose Gunther before we uh, end up talking about available liquidity. So. No, you guys continue on. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll try we'll to come back. Oh, we got plenty of questions. Thank yeah. you so much, Gunther. We'll talk yeah, to you soon, man. Have yeah, a great guys. day. Appreciate, Appreciate it. That. Uh, well, that sounds like a good segue there, DP. So uh, what are you talking about with the, uh, you said, present? what was it, presentable liquidity? Or oh, available, available liquidity. Please. So, um, oh, man, I'm not on the potato right so i mean i know i know uh very very basic knowledge on all of this I'm, I'm as a community member my whole thing is just kind of focusing on other ecosystems but what i understand as far as available liquidity within the pulse doge system is that the claims are drying up meaning the amount of people that are claiming are going down right and pulse doge already has a limited set of supply available Right now on market and what's available is pretty much, I think, within 40,000 just PLSD. And there's a huge buy wall around the 360, 370 mark. 
So what is, can you describe that? What does that mean? What, so how I understand that is that people that are selling, it's just being bought right up by the people that are offering liquidity, by the whales that are providing liquidity, it's just being bought right up. And once the supply dries up within certain price ranges, it's just so much easier for the price to move up or down, just depending on who's offering what in certain areas. So as I understand it, again, it's our, just the claims are drying up and the amount of people that are becoming aware of Pulse Doge are increasing. I mean, I, I'm reading Pristology in the chat. And again, I mean, the biggest thing, my, my whole focus is, again, not, not trying to get that, that, that recycling of, of, of financial value from just big players to smaller players. And it's great. That how, are you, how are you kind of, uh, how do you kind of spread your wings with the marketing a little bit? It seems like something that you're into, right? Like you, you like to run around, you like to talk to different people. You like to, uh, so what is your kind of thing? I think one of the questions early on that Briz had was how are you guys outreaching or is how is the meme coin space outreaching to other spaces that, that are away from the hexagon community? It's yeah, it's been really tough. I mean, especially with uh, the stigma that that Hex carries, even 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 reaching out to these callers like Mate House and Eric Cryptoman and, you know, B Roots and, you know, the the the, the Pied Pipers of the DGENs, essentially, it, they they won't even leave their their community to ours. And it's just so it's it's really it's been really tough trying to kind of figure out how to include the rest of crypto and also our warm market you know we're a bunch of normal people and we have a bunch of normal people in our lives and it's like how do we even talk to them about what we're doing how do we even get them to be interested well, I, think, I think the way that i kind of approach it and i'd like to have everyone else's take on this too like when it comes to the marketing i kind of try to punch a little bit right through the hex thing like the hex stigma like i'm i'm new like the guys that are coming in that are new like you know the newer guys, the newer generation, there's going to be less and less stigma as we go. I just try to pretend it's cool and it's no big deal. Like I don't bring up like major controversy with Hex because it's all stupid anyway. I just like move on, right? Like that's the way that I approach it. I'm just like, hey, we're bodybuilder guys. We love crypto. This is where we're at. And people, stick, people are, it, it's a sticky way to do it because I get DMs all the time. They, they're like, oh, you're bodybuilding. Oh, you're doing this. Like they're not necessarily into me because of my exact crypto portfolio as much as like a lot of the other hexagons they're like clearly like rich hexagons and like that like i tell people all the time if hex went to zero my life would change this much other than what i would be talking about like it, so that that changes the way that I, people interact with me you know what i mean people interact with me i'm like i'm not on team shit. you guys can say whatever you want about your fat hundred million dollar bags or whatever like i you don't own me right for what like just because i'm a hexagon just because i have hex stakes just because i like have a staking ladder and support uh immutable DeFi, the only immutable DeFi. Mm -hmm. um you know what i mean like so for me i'm just trying to go i'm just trying to like overcool it if you know what i mean like i'm just trying to be like hey like gym life real life family life girlfriend life like it's all cool like i love hex too and like, I want people to come to me because they like me because right. that breaks through that. Um, like, I didn't want this just to be like the hex channel. Right. Because mm -hmm. then people wouldn't watch it. Right. Period. Period. End of story. A certain cap amount of people would watch it. And every person that started hex staking would watch it, but I'm getting bodybuilding. Me and Sam are doing a bodybuilding podcast tonight, tonight. Where 6 we're not talking. EST, 6 p.m. EST on my channel. If you guys want to check it out, 6 p.m. EST. Bullish, will you post that in the comments, please? And uh, we're that we're gonna start doing that, like that kind of stuff. And we're gonna try to bridge the gap that way. So I think for everyone in general, like you don't, I don't care about what people. I'm like a hot pearl in this way. Like people can say whatever. They, people have been sent calling me a little shit my whole life. <laughs> ain't, 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 ain't nothing changing on that. So like I ain't worried about all that. People say I'm narcissistic. I'm crazy. I'm like, dude, I, I come on here. I'm more transparent than any motherfucker you know. So you can absolutely suck my balls. And I'm not chilling anything. Who's paying me to sit here? Who's paying me to talk? No one. Figure out who's paying the people that are you're that you're talking to. You'll find out that some people don't get paid for like I don't get I don't get I don't take bribes. 
You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't care that much. Being ripped is such a social plus True. 10. You don't have to, no matter what, you could always be like, oh yeah, suck it. You know, yeah. and, and like, it actually works. It does. <laughs> It does. And you can people be really nice. Jealous. Like when you're, when you're ripped, you can be really nice. <laughs> people are like, eh, they could probably beat my ass, but like, they're super friendly. So great. You know, like also, plus it's also an advantage too, because you get like a, the stereotype in the opposite direction that is portrayed in mainstream media, like movies and television shows that if you have uh, muscle that you're dense uh, mentally, right. Or that you, uh, are mean or, or you're a jerk, right? And, and so it's easy to go through and break through that because then you're like, yeah, I'm Jack. Yes, I'm leading. Yes, I know what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm like all this other shit above and beyond that. Oh, and I like to help people and I'm nice and all this. Stuff. So it's easy, it's relatively easy to break through because there's that. That's what the world tells you as in like the narrative they like to spread. Um, so it's a little bit easier to break through. So I'm curious to see I've been in that world for a long time. That's what like a lot of my business is in and tying the two of those together is going to be interesting. That, the, and that was the reason that I brought up like it, earlier, the hidden wall, because I was like, dude, I can use this for my business to help run the business. Like that's going to be uh, dope to be able to do something. Um, Hanko, a few moments ago, you, you were, when he was talking about liquidity, you were doing something like that with your pen. Did you, I thought you had something to say or were you just- Oh, I'm just fiddling around. But I, I, uh, I actually do Twitch around a lot when I'm thinking about stuff. And I, I, when I do streams, I write stuff down. So that's why I have my pencil. I have my little, you know, stuff. I'm taking notes. I always take notes when there's multiple people on the stream. There's a lot to learn. There's a, a ton to learn. How can somebody, Gunther was like talking about uh, whale addresses, right? So, mm -hmm. right. I've been in crypto for, for 90 days. Right? And I'm wow, like, welcome. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. And, and, and I'm like, and I like the analytics or the background analysis type stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, agree. Right. You can you can paint whatever fucking story you want with the data, right? Look at what Big Five has done over the last 36 months, right? But um the point is, how, how do you how do you get to the source of the information? So if somebody's like, hey, Paul Stoge, cool, interesting. This is a interesting conversation but i'm gonna i'm gonna use the functioning graveyard i have and actually go look into this i want to find the top 20 wallets who are that are holding pulse doge how what are the semantics how does somebody actually do that well um there are like i'll say hex for example you know with some of the higher um you know wallets some of the sites that analyze the um the uh, activity will actually have some of the wallet address info um but if you go on the telegram telegram's great for this right because um so ether scan really is what you'd use um but how do you how do you how do you find those top the top ones or or is it just searching in a fucking like what is the term the are you talking about the top wallets yeah. yeah. How do you how do you find the top wallets? You just go to EtherScan, or yeah. there's a and, and 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 do do what? Like you go to. EtherScan I mean, they, you gotta what? be. I mean, everyone. I mean, there's a whole there's list 150 stuff. different ways to research Ether address. I guess some people wouldn't know. Yeah. But you don't know what name is necessarily on. But it'll the show wallet, the address. But no, no. Yeah. But how do you how do you yeah. so somebody's like oh, this isn't really a technical. I mean, we're we're not pulling up anything. Saying no, this is a hundred. This is a hundred percent selfish question from a. No, I know, but like it's not like, the right. How do I find the top ten addresses in any coin that I want on EtherScan? You pull up the you pull up the token of that, and you're like, hey, Dogecoin. How do I find the top ten addresses in Doge? Yeah. yeah. Like we don't actually have to pull it up, Lewis, but so you go to the specific token. And and it, you can search by buying. This is exactly what I was looking for. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Do you know how to for other that's people to not that's 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 No, that's trust me, Gunther's that's doing that. that. Moby Dick and whales. What, what did you that's say, that's DP? Nothing. Oh, well, that's what I'm trying to say is that it's like this this industry we take our knowledge for granted you're 90 days new and it's just we're laughing but it's like dude this is what i have to deal with That's all the time and, yeah. you know my dentist is like sacrifice for pulse chain and uh, <laughs> right <you know? laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I, I just think it's the wrong context. And I don't care. I don't care what people think. So I'm like, I'll no, but that. I'm the show what host. So I just when I we pull stuff up when we're talking about something that you have to click through when it's not pulled up, but then Bullish pulled it up. So I, that's I a good know. question for Telegram as well, Sam. Yeah, Telegram's a really good resource, Sam, and I think that's kind of where, where we're getting at too. Like a lot of these like detailed questions for anyone in the comments that wants to know like little detail questions like this, like people will shoot everything that you could possibly want. If you go to these specific telegrams and ask these questions, it'll clear up a lot of the learning curve for a lot of this stuff, like really quick too. like, you know, within, you know, a couple days, if you ask the right questions in these chats, you will be a hundred percent up to speed on exactly what's going on. And any questions like that, that you have that are specific and we can look up, like we could do a full episode and that's kind of what I meant. Like we could do a full episode on how to do that. Like well, on, that, that answer, I mean, like if I know where to find that information now, I yeah. can go actually do look at each one of those myself. Uh, I wasn't where to, where to, uh, aware of where to find the actual addresses associated with any coin or token. How do you find those top 20, 30 addresses? So there's we'll definitely for- a learning curve to using Etherscan and reading yeah. Etherscan as well. And I think that's kind of like why, because you're asking the general question. I understand, like, okay, how do I look this up? But the real answer is Etherscan, then you get to learn how to use it, which, you know, if it, it does involve a few more questions and a few more clicking around and just getting used to it as well. So and we're going to have some guys coming on here in the next week that are pretty much professionals at doing that. Access, you know, access, access, I don't, let's just say access can work his way around the blockchain pretty mm-hmm. well. And we're, we've we've all done biceps in the chat for Axis already, and I've spammed him over and over again, you know. And um, you know, let's get him on here by force. Like let's 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 take it away everybody, from everybody. Everybody, if you want to see Axis, you can go down below uh, to click over to Twitter, and then just tweet at him and tag us and be like, "Yo, you need to come on the show, or we're not following you." And just mass do that. <laughs> or- <laughs> I just force them to come ultimatums on. before as we wrap up here guys is there anything that you want to talk about like is there any questions that you have is there anything that you're like doing work projects you're doing stuff that you're into like i don't care like whatever it is i i, I want to know about but if you don't have anything to it's like I, I, some people will be doing other shit like I'm you waiting said for hex to pump I'm waiting yeah. for the moment for it to happen. And I don't know what Pulse Chain is going to do to the chart, right? Um, you know, how how that parity is going to meet if it's upward or downward, probably downward, and then it'll go back up. Um, can we, can you talk real quick, can you talk about like what you think about the hex right now, the, act, the whole market? Like, I don't know too much about how much you look into these stuff, but like, yeah. what's your perspective on all that as someone who probably has a lot of experience? Well, it's fascinating because um, some liquidity has been taken out of the um, liquidity pool uh, for HEX and dumped on the market. So what that means is there's less liquidity and, of course, the price is lower. But how how much longer can that price remain lower when people want HEX and when the liquidity is low, right? It's very bullish to me. Um, Pulse chain coming out is going to affect the normalcy of what I would guess what would happen on a chart. So from what I see, um, a lot of, because Pulse is going to launch, the same similar thing happened um, at the end of the sacrifice phase for Pulse when people were trying to dollar cost averages. Um, and I hate to blame whales, but a lot of them wanted to lower the price, you know, or like the dump until the price got lower and buy up more. That's like a it's something that happens very often. Sometimes um, that dumping is indicative of a big thing happening, right? Because you have a lot, a lot of these whales and dolphins and the higher level of hexagons, they're smart people. They're not dumb. They're not just lucky. You can see their movements and they, some of their, some of them are investment firms. Some of them aren't just one person. You have to think about that too. Some of these people that only operate Monday morning to Friday night are actually in a big building somewhere, not wow, just some, you know, yeah. So, and not even necessarily uh, English-speaking countries either. So, 
you know, to think about um, what would be in their best interest if they're professionally doing this with their money and other people's money, whatever. Um, what what would they want before Pulse Chain launch? Perhaps a cheaper price. Um, some of these whales, um, and it's too bad Gunther's gone. I was going to talk to him about them. Um, one of these guys uh, just making a massive short-term stake. But what that could mean is, and I don't know if this is the case, but you have to analyze all of these things. Think about the strategy people are doing. You're not necessarily right, but your probability of being onto something is pretty high. Um, maybe what do you trying think to... the biggest negative externality of Hex is? Negative externality. Or like, what do you think the, like the, if anything, I mean, obviously we can all see the price chart. It's basically outperformed everything. So you can say it has less negative aspects to it than most cryptos, which I agree. That's why I like it the most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, I, like when I study Hex, the thing that comes up the most in my mind when I'm looking is those short term, really large stakes, like how many of those people would, how much money do they actually have? How long could they actually milk those short term stakes? Because then it's just pricing guys like me out on the T-share rate anyway. And they're sucking a lot of the liquidity out. But like, again, it's all long term stuff. Like all, my, my stake length is 11 years plus for my stakes, but I do have some liquid. I just, when I think of like, we're minting more hex to in a lot of the people that have hex. Yes, a good actor, bad actor. That's kind of what you're going into. Like you have to observe all these things. But some people just have a lot, a very large volume, right? And then how much money is too much money when the price starts? You know what I mean? As somebody who's holding for a long time, um, I don't, I don't even see people taking profit as as a bad actor or dumping or like eating it on the slippage. I mean, they're their own worst enemy doing that. But um, and you have to think if you're going to eat this kind of slippage um, right before a pulse chain launch, what are you trying to do? You're probably trying to dump the price of hex before the pulse chain launch. That's my guess. I could be completely wrong. Um, the short term stakes. Um, what happens when, you know, you guys know about you know, emergency end stakes, you get the fees during times of high volatility. It sometimes, and you have to think about, okay, the gas price versus, versus how long I'm doing this. And large players actually stand to benefit with volatility on other stakes um, during, or benefit on other, other emergency end stakes on the chain during times of high volatility. And that could be a reason why there's a short term, um, someone would make a short term uh, stake, right? Um, one of my reasonings is, or the things I, something I came up the, with that could be a possibility is let's say you wanted to collect, a lot of people on the Ethereum hex are going to try to ch exchange that for P hex, right? I've heard a lot of people, oh, but I think P hex is going to be worth more, okay? Yeah, a lot of people, yes, I agree. People have said so, that. So considering that, um, when the fork happens, what do you think is going to happen to all of these large upcoming stakes um, on the Ethereum side? Do you think people will emergency end stake? Hell like no. They'll probably buy more. No, they'll probably. Well, I mean, it, it all depends but on, on what happens. But if people are going to exchange Ethereum hex for P hex, they might emergency end stake on the eHex side. You know what I mean? To get more liquid to mess with eHex and on PulseX, right? To, to be a liquidity pair provider. But don't you think so many of those people that are actually staked would have sacrificed a large amount? I don't know. You know, there's a lot. There's it's just so they much. They made those stakes there. long ago. True. Right? When you look when you look at like so True. When I look at that, you have... It's all conjecture anyway. It is all conjecture. And you can take a look and you think about each step. So you go through each piece of it, right? So you're like, okay, there's going to be four versions of hacks. You're going to have two on each side, two on pulse chain side, a wrapped version on each side. Uh, if the ratios are trading at one for two on either side, then somebody right, has an incentive to bring more through the bridge from the other side to double the bank. Right? Yeah. It just makes sense to do that, which then pushes things to parity very quickly, especially when one person owns 
the vast majority of everything in one thing. But what's that, what's that volatility going to do post-launch on the Ethereum side? In the, 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 the payout for T-Share will be large, right? So Payout for T-Share, so you're thinking on you're... The Ethereum side. If it's uh, if it's volatile. It's possible. Uh, can, this is all can, just a possible. No, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, I appreciate the, the the perspective. Why why do you believe that that could be possible? I'm not saying it could be or could be. I'm I'm one and another reason behind why you believe it could be high. Well, if you go, I um often look at um, and I think this is important for hexagons who uh, trade. And if I'm taking up too my, much time talking about this, let me no, know. you're I'm not. not. Okay. Here, zero um, I'll try to keep it concise. This is, a, this is amazing, and I, I don't have any time limit, so I think Sam. Oh, cool. Okay. I, I gotta get off. Of, I gotta get off of one, but like I wanted to hear your. Oh, 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 for your time. I'm gonna um, stay. Okay, so, uh, Apex dot win slash charts is a good, quick way to look at win stakes and, and I think a lot of hexagons don't necessarily utilize this function when thinking about what what to do with their hex when many people's stakes end they tend to take profit right and um, i called the dip because there's there were gigantic many stakes um coming out i'm like what's gonna happen we what percentage of people stake 100 percent, or they just stake another five 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 not all of them right they go and they take profit so what happens to the price it's a redistribution phase right they're, the whales, the, the larger players, I want to say whales, are distributing to the smaller players, and that's really what's happening. Holders don't care. This is a normal part of a crypto. Um, but uh, yeah, when there when there are massive stakes ending, you know the price is going to drop. And it's surprising to me that people don't look at this sort of thing when stakes end from other users. It's huge. We we talked about that in depth on two shows. Like you're like, oh wow, yeah. there's millions of shares of hex coming out and then stakes over the next several yeah. days. Even if a fraction of one percent of the total bags that's coming out dumps, it's still you like ten million shares. Forever. And now now I'm a big proponent of staking instead of trading hex. But if you purely were to trade hex, if you were to use it not for its you know maximum functionality, you could play it just by timing when the shares end pretty much and you might make a profit just on that so um I, what I, that means yeah no i think that's totally true agree that's why richard says uh most transparent blockchain you could literally it just, is right the moment it's on a centralized exchange it's i mean jesus it's a it's a signaling effect right like you look at anybody who's done any type of investing like in, in like real life uh, outside of crypto like when they make a good investment it turns out some like on average people pull either a small portion or, or a lot of it off the table it's just what they do and the same thing holds for you know stocks and uh, bonds and other things and the same thing holds for crypto you we just get to see when these people are going to dump some of their shit. that's all like it's yeah trust more and it's kind of it's kind of cool that we actually get to see that it's human behavior on a blockchain is all it is that's all it is it's all you're seeing you're watching the Pareto distribution of wealth in real time and you're watching it happen over time and it's what humans do it ends up being how we operate financial or otherwise right it's yeah cool it's cool because you can also see how the bags react to the world climate as well you know what i mean it's they like do. Yeah. Uh, what time? Yeah, absolutely. You can. Um, and somebody asked me, um, okay, what do you think? And they're a rather new hexagon. What do you think the price of hex could be at its highest? You know, and I'm like, well, I don't know what fiat you're asking me. I mean, USD, what's going to happen with USD? Is there going to be massive inflation? If hex is 5,000 USD, but it's, Four thousand USD to buy a loaf of bread. How much is it? Right. So that's hard. That's a very hard question to answer because there's two different variables going up and down. So, so you basically you have your there's a uh, if if you're pricing things mentally in USD, what uh, Hatrola is saying is you, you USD is volatile. It probably yes. will be. 
Yeah. And we, we already know the 90 year plus chart of USD is down. <laughs> like we already know that's happening. So you're just going to increase. Relative so if hex were to, if the price of hex, let's say, for example, were to stay the same, its price would be going up. And that what you did, what you just said is, is, is a concept that's hard for a, a lot of people to grasp. Yeah. That's a, that's a hard thing for some people to grasp. I have to, I have to jump. I've jumped. This has okay. been awesome. Uh, Hudrell, DP, you guys are freaking awesome. I appreciate you guys coming on and sharing your information. This has been this has been fun. If you guys watching want to catch GRC talking about fitness and myself and my buddy later tonight, uh, come on to my channel. We're gonna dab there and then we're gonna dab there. Oh, and I'll, I'll... <laughs> if you make sure you send me that thumbnail and stuff so I can. Yes, it's it's, it's it's already up. I'll put uh, it's already up and loaded on my other YouTube okay. channel. So I'll uh, share that Twitter shortly. All right, get Appreciate your ass out of here. Appreciate it too. So. Yeah, so we're going to be doing that bodybuilding podcast tonight. That's cool. going to be good. I'll try to check it out. Yeah, the macroeconomic situation is rather crazy right now. So, I mean, for everyone that's listening, like, it's not – it could potentially be a rather dark time in general moving, you know, as far as financially over the next year, depending on how some of the stuff with the Senate – in the United States politics goes, depending, you know, there's so many factors. We could talk all day long about a bunch of random factors that no one can control, right? Including legislation. Like, we, you know, they can legislate you out too. They can. They believe it or not, they can legislate out DeFi. You know, Hex is great and all, but like, what do we get out into fiat and just like Hobpro was saying, like USDC or whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's so it's like it's a lot dependent on the banks. So it's just it, it is weird that people like mention DeFi as some sort of like not attached to the bank thing. But it's like all attached. What does that mean? Well, here's the, the one of the problems with people that are hard on DeFi just as a as a concept, concept um, morally, right? Mm -hmm. Like kind of fuck the bank type of, of people is, yeah, I mean, there are people like that. Um, and then there are people that, ah, oh, I used Coinbase, but I guess I'll use Matcha because the cheap fees are cheaper or something like that, right? Where they just happen to use DeFi, but they're still normies, right? People that are almost religiously DeFi tend to hold. They don't tend to trade. They don't tend to sell. So that doesn't really help the value if everybody hold well it does it makes the price go up but at some point somebody has to sell at some point somebody has to come in at some point there has to be new people right um or you just have a basically the dark web again which is kind of what it might turn into with this legislation but i think that um I think what's that what's going to happen is these politicians aren't they're going to try to be a part of it they're not necessarily going to reject it some of them will but they'll try to get theirs they'll try to get the fees from it or they'll they'll probably make a decentralized national exchange with their national stable coin i think they're going to probably try to do that they're you know it might be surprising how they'll end up legislating it or trying to copy it right well, I don't know how surprising any of it will be. They're just going to do whatever they want and give everyone who's rich a horrible rate on something. And, you know, they're going to wreck everyone in their own way, of course. They're going to ultimately fail, though, because they're not as smart as the people who are designing. Well, it's not. Stuff. I don't know if it's if they're not that smart, but there's too much. They It takes too long. It's that's it's like legislation is like the slowest thing. Crypto is like the yeah. fastest thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Hedron, you were hearing about Hedron. Next thing you know, everyone has Hedron in their wallet, right? It's like, bam, like right in your face. Like, wow, how quick was that? Like airdrop 10x already down the to quick one. People don't have to work for the government. Yeah, that's why I'd say they might, but they don't have to. Like, I just quit my job and I was like, I'm just going to study crypto all day. See what happens. You could you could do that. That's, yeah, I did, man. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. I literally quit my job. I was making a pretty damn large amount of money. I was like, this shit's way too cool. I was like, I'm yeah, out. it's I was just like I'm out. Like I feel like on your deathbed, you're not going to regret 
Fuck no. That's why you don't have kids and shit, though. Once you you have kids, you're locked up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying you're permanently locked up, but you have to go tend to them first. For 18 years. (laughs) Well, if you're you're a billionaire, like having two kids isn't going to rough up your business venture too much. But like if you have like three grand, like you're not. Yeah, no, (laughs) it's it's a different game for people with families. They tend to be more risk averse and rightfully so. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't really Mm -hmm. blame them. Like, well, why don't you get into this opportunity? Like, because I have hungry kids, you know, like. The, the adrenaline rush isn't worth it if they're hungry and it's a it's real that's that's why like uh people get on richard hart for his stupid big pp gross marketing but it's like he's not marketing to normal people right now he's marketing to to nerds on both sides of the spectrum right the iq normie that's what he's marketing to now because in the middle the fiat on wrapping right now is too difficult this is too difficult for people who don't have the extra time to use it. Oh, now. So right now it is. It won't be. I think with the wallet, hopefully it has an easier fiat on-ramping system. We want this as easy to use as it is Coinbase is. Even though it's a centralized exchange, we need it to be easier to use for most people. Yeah, it is and tough. Well, then the market is, you know. Insane. Like, just for, yeah. for the crowd. I mean, Sam... 90 days new and you know he's spilling with uh with questions and i'm still learning and i'm two years and i haven't even touched uh you know what i mean like i don't even touch my laptop so there's just well like, good i'm glad you had i'm glad you have a separate laptop for that that's smart and sam oh, has a quick laptop. brain he just keeps coming up with these things that he just massively wants to learn this stuff and it's good it's good that oh. he's asking all those questions that's all he yeah. does that's all he does is study. i bet He's and he's at that hungry phase. Yeah, it's 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 good to, it's good to constantly keep consuming information, especially within the space. I mean, it's like being a programmer; you're you're always having to update and educate yourself into new programming languages, and it's the same yeah. thing with crypto. There's just so many things that are coming out, and it's like, you know, to touch on you know all the darkness and legislation and all that stuff that you guys were talking about. I think that's what makes memes so fun. It's people just like they like a uh, they don't. Want, you know, they just don't they don't it's like a it's like a that's what that's what makes the degeneracy fun as well it's like why people go to the casino and why they go they go gamble it's just uh it's just a, like a let loose type of thing you know what i mean i think you the know, fun's the, more important like the fun that you're talking about is more important than people realize because you need to want to do this you need to want to quit your job for doing this right you need you need to want to like shit posting on Twitter and in art and NFTs, it's important for the blockchain to have a lot of uh, people in it. Right, and, and that's what I'm trying to do is make it fun. I mean, Jim Rat, you said that you know you try to have the streams more to you know cater to like a, a wider audience and a bigger crowd. It's like you have certain things hanging up that's on the brilliant. wall, but it doesn't really define you, right? Yep. And so that's what I've been. I mean, like my whole thing with the with even the project that that i'm helping or real quick i want to shout out the 20 dollars super chat thank you so much maddie all in hot pearl spitting mad knowledge thanks grc and dp too for your insights thank you so much maddie all in maddie Maddie ross thanks such a chill guy dude such a chill guy he he does so much he's anyway but yeah it's just it's like it's like you 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 try to expand to a wider audience the things behind you don't really define you but it's just things that you're interested in right and so it's my whole thing with trying to get with just talking to general warm market and people I meet like literally is just trying to get them excited about crypto because even talking to them about crypto, they're like, hmm, you're in that risky thing. You should, you know, you should probably do a career. I'm just like, man, I, I came from a career. <laughs> like I came from certain things. I, I really don't like to get beat up like that. I hate like I hate certain things like about all that. And so. That's why I'm trying to get people excited. And even when you, like with my whole thing, my value proposition is talking to artists right now, like women artists, I feel like, you know, I've commented on your art at one point, but that was a while ago. Um, and yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it, okay. looked, it, looked, it was, anyways, it was intense. And so it's just even talking to them, it's like I've offered money up front and I've said, you know, I've tried to describe like a whole mint and blah, 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 if it's successful, there'll be more. But the whole thing is I'm valuing valuing their time. And even when I'm saying, hey, I'm going to offer you money, they'll look me in the eyes and they'll say, hey, D, I just don't believe in crypto. I'm sorry. And that'll be it. And I, you know, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm not going to be like, hey, you know, like, stop, like, stop, please. So like, many artists are because of the proof of work. 
they have env environmental concerns. I think that Pulse Chain will be a huge hit with these artists that really bought into the propaganda. I hate to say it. Right. And and so but, with those, um, it, it'll happen. I really believe adoption will happen. I really believe what we're doing is important and there will be a flood. But the whole point is, is that we're trying to convince the people that we can right now that the flood is coming. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. that's the hard part. That's the hard part right now. So it's just if you have any ideas on on anything, that's like the whole like this this whole Dow the sock thing. We're we're three quarters filled out. We're already like seven hundred something out of a thousand in a bear market. Wow. And I'm like, if if we could do this in a bear market and we have this such, such solid community, what happens when the bull comes? What happens when when people realize this is our chart during an inflation period. What happens when people realize, oh, y'all have NFT crowd. I mean, yeah. we have all these different, we have all these different, you know, blending of communities. We'll see, we'll see. Amazing That's awesome. stuff. This is the best community to be in during a bear market. There's no question in my mind. There's no other community in a bear market. They just like, they just kind oh, of right. disperse a little bit you know they all still there but like they're focusing on whatever hex is just like very passionate community very very passionate and that's what you need that's exactly what you need and i i think this is a good time to end this has been a crazy good show guys um thanks I, for having me on yeah i appreciate this so much and i hope you guys can come on again sometime in the future we talked about a lot of stuff today guys it's been an incredible episode hod pearl dp thank you so much Gunther was in here earlier, guys, killing it. Make sure you follow these two, and I'll drop their uh, inst I'll drop their uh, Twitters below before I finish. Follow them, follow the show, hit the like, hit the subscribe, guys. Share it out to a friend that's getting wrecked, and we will talk to you next time. We're gonna play an outro video, guys. Have a wonderful day. Young folks, you tripping on them, motherfucker? Bought my hex from the fucking start. Uh -huh. Point one in every day we mark. Bought my hex from the fucking start. Uh -huh. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt. Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Uh -huh. Buy my hex from the fucking start Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start Now I'm checking on my pulse just to check my heart Checking my metamask moving Look at the hex he has mooning Looking at why they be choosing Peter is why they be losing Pro chains out and get me a check He's gas up and got me a mess Remember the times he died collect Hex I me eating I'm dying in the best Getting this back like a year ago Getting this post I ain't letting go Swerving the ring like a lamb